Alrighty then. Man like Tabin, plain as Germany. Great civilization. Great civilization. Always love watching Germany. Always love watching Germany. Plain as Russia in the north of the map. But Nico, who is 2100 ELO. That's right. 2100 ELO. So, you know, best of the best almost at the moment going by ELO. I think the highest is like around 2200. So, you know, he's, he's pretty much up there. Don't actually know who this guy is. Looks like it's, a, again, it's a Smurf account. EPL is obviously going on. So a lot of people like to play on their Smurf accounts as opposed to their real accounts. Just so they can, you know, you don't know who they are, who's playing. So they can hide their build orders and strategies. But this should be fun regardless. Now, Russia get a lot of hate for being quote unquote bad civ. I don't disagree with that statement necessarily. I think Russia could do with some love. And I definitely think they're sitting near the bottom of the tier list. But this guy's 2100 ELO. He's playing on the rank ladder. He's playing against Tabern. Extremely good player. So we'll see who we see what happens. Who do we think? Who guys, Sputnico, come on. Right. How many Russia mains? How many Russia mains at this level are there? Hmm? Kaiser plays Russia? Hazard plays Russia? That's all I can think of. Maybe Izad, but we'll see. We'll see if we, we notice any play style uh, differences. So Tavern's gone for early TP. Interesting, because uh, I'd say more often than not, you see market starts with Germany, but he's decided to go for a TP start here, leaving that uh, gold crate on the floor, because obviously that doesn't if impact his age two time up. So it's not going to, he's not going to be getting hunting dogs. So it's absolutely useless all the way up until he ages to age two. So that's going to only de delay him if he decides to put a village on it. So he's going to leave that gold on the floor to not waste any time aging up. The little seconds, guys, the little seconds. It all adds up. Okay, he's microing a treasure up here. It's going to be a big pumpkin. A big, that, a hundred food. That is a big pumpkin. It's not Halloween either, so... Um, can't say I've actually ever tried pumpkin, to be perfectly honest with you. Pumpkin seeds, but pumpkins, ugh, no, no thank you. Uh, anyone dare say pumpkin pie, I swear to God. Houses of Fana and the House of Wetting are the natives of choice on the map. Now, uh, the House of Wetting is so, so good. One of the main reasons House of Wetting is so good, they're, they're, their units are actually really good. They did get buffed a f quite a while ago. So the Trabants actually have a charged attack. Boom. So it's a, a, a charged ranged attack. And then after that charged attack, they turn into melee like a halberdier. Uh, but also this tech, the Marriage Politics, which is 300 and it makes age ups 20% cheaper. Well worth getting. Like if you see House of Wetting on the map and you plan on going to age three and just age three, but age four as well, even better then it is well worth, it's well worth the investment to get this card. Yes, it costs an extra 200 resources to get the, uh, to get the TP as well. But you're not just going for marriage politics because it gets even better, guys. This goddamn big button is insane. Goldener Raider significantly boosts cavalry and shock infantry armor. So if you, especially with a civilization like Germany, I would be very surprised if Tabin doesn't go for the TP. If, if he doesn't go for the TP, it's because he doesn't know about that big button. It's unbelievably insane for Germany because it lasts for, I think, about a minute, to be perfectly honest with you. If it's not a minute, it's 30 seconds. Like, And it gives you an insane boost to your cavalry and shock infantry for such a long time. Honestly, it needs to be nerfed. Honestly, it needs to be nerfed. It should be nerfed to about 10 seconds worth. Because honestly, it just changes it changes the tide of the battle so insanely. So yeah, so long story short, House of Wetting, brilliant, brilliant. Like definitely S tier. 100% it's S tier on the native tier list at the moment. House of Fana, not so much. <laughs> House of Fana is okay, certain builds, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we've got the standard... Sputnik is going for the blockhouse standard build order here. Germany is built a wall. Going for early stable. So that's, a uh, yeah, getting that quite early in. Uh, obviously, the blockhouse is down. He's H2, so units are going to be coming. 
Tavern decided to go for those uh, three settler wagons first. Yep, going greedy to begin with, but I imagine we'll very shortly see some of these unit cards. Let's take a quick look. And five musketeers, or rusketeers as we call them, because they're weaker than normal musketeers. Coming out at five minutes, very nice. He's going to take down that TP. Yes, that's going to delay him from impacting Tavern's eco. But losing losing a TP is is it's not nice. You know, he did get it at, at, in, in H1 at the beginning, so it has got a fair few passes. So it hasn't been useless, but you know, it's 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 200 resources. You know, it's 200 resources. So to lose it, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a shame. But Tabin's going to be okay with that because Tabin needs time right now. This is what Tabin wants. He needs to buy as much time as possible. The more time you have against Russia the better. The more forces you can build up, the better your eco is going to be. And this wall has really done that. So if we see the effectiveness of this wall, it's essentially deterred the, the cavalry from um, going into his base. Going to do some raiding here. He's on 17 vil, so he hasn't picked up a vil. My multiples of three, you know, my GCC maths, uh, primary school maths has come in handy. <laughs> so I know he hasn't lost a villager. But that's going to... Look, look how much time that's bought. So Sputniko has bought his five cavalry all the way back to his base. Just because of two cavalry raiding. That's insane. And that's a big shipment of five Ulons. Plus another two Ulons from his second shipment, I presume. So that's going to be nine Ulons. In total. Now that's going to cause some damage. Now how does he deal with it? Because five, five of these Cossacks is not going to be enough. Does he add Minutemen in here? Does he bring some Musketeers back? They're going to be sieging down this wall. Second blockhouse is going up. So Sputniko, he shipped his 700 wood. So a very standard build order here. 700 wood coming in. And 250 of that wood is going to be used to build another blockhouse. Tavern's poor explorer is over here. You always want your explorer alive. Especially against civilizations that rush hard. Don't underestimate how, how important having an explorer. Particularly an explorer on 4 HP. Will make a huge difference in a big age 2 fight early on. Because they have 500, 600 HP. And that soaks an insane amount of damage. They also have a really effective snare. Because they're very tanky. So they can get a good snare. Which will slow the, the opponent's units down. So anyone out there that's a slightly lower elo. These are really good points. Honestly. I'm not lying to you. Raiding on this gold mine. Musketeer goes down. No dead bodies. So there was no dead settlers. Or settler wagons. And, and I mean 5, 10 ruskets aren't going to. Uh, they're going to take. It's going to take a few shots of them to kill a settler wagon. It does look like the Great Coats has come in. So these settler wagons are going to have like 400 HP. So as we can see, look at look how look how frustrating that explorer is. So Tavern had the opportunity to really pounce on the Russia's army. But just because that explorer was there and it was really tanky, it was able to get a snare on this cavalry, which really kind of frustrated the alignment of the cav. So he really couldn't push in like he really wanted to. So yeah, that explorer coming in really handy there and really deterring this army. Uh, sorry, this army from completely destroying this. And that was the big that was the big kind of tempo moment that Tabin wanted. But he didn't want to dive into the double blockhouses. So he got away with that. It's a very nice explorer micro there by Sputniko. Walls going up. Oh, but this this Ulon on 20 HP. But that, that could actually get punched down very in two hits by an explorer. So that's not actually going to really be able to do much other than just kind of get a bit of uh, a bit of line of sight, a bit of information, see what's going on. He, he, he looks like he's probably looking for those herds or he's looking for the stable. He wants to see if the stable's gone up. He is going to use two ones here though. Oh, and that's going to go down and that's nice. He does lose two Ulans for it, but they look like they were quite weak. So for one villager, that's definitely worth it for Tabin. Yeah, so that other Ulan going to get punched down, almost killing that settler. It, it looks like he was looking for a, a settler that was already weak HP, so very clever. If you look, if you press the alt tab, anyone who's not aware of this, you can press the alt tab to bring up the HP bars of everyone. So he's was definitely pressing this, trying to look for that low HP settler. And then bang, 20 HP Ulan kills a settler. These walls are going to go up. Tabin is going to be aging. Going to be sending some doppel sodners. That's interesting. Maybe he's Maybe he's either worried about the 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 cavalry or he wants that extra bit of siege. Um, not sure about the siege side of it, but he's got no anti-cav currently. So maybe that's what he's a little bit worried about. He hasn't actually scoured a stable because there is no stable. So he hasn't seen it, but he, think, he thinks he knows it's there. So 
No water. Oh, no. Tell, I tell a lie. Look, the stable is there. The stable is there. But does Tavern see? He doesn't. So he's he's almost doing it blindly. But the war wagons are coming in. I imagine he'll cancel the doppelsodners now. Because that was probably just a security measure in case he pounces before he's aged. But no, he's decided to keep those two. Maybe that was a bit of a mistake keeping them in there. Because obviously war wagons are much more effective at this stage. Some really nuisance raiding going on with Tavern. Really, really high micro here. Just constantly running Ulons around the map. Frustrating the Russian player. The Russian player hasn't accomplished very much at all. Other than other than a tiny bit of frustration here. But not really. Um, and taking the TP down. He's tried to establish some map control with the double block house, but again, is that going to be is that going to be particularly useful? Um, we have looked a lot at Tavern, so we'll we'll take a quick look at Russia. He's not going to be he's actually age three as well. If we take a quick look at his build, so he went for five Cossacks, seven hundred wood, four Cossacks, seven hundred gold, and then he's used that to age. So kind of like a semi FF build. Which I totally agree with, uh, particularly if you see this wall and stuff. There's, there's no way against someone like Tavern you're going to be able to just dive in here and uh, expect to win the game. You're just going to get you're going to get completely like shut off. You're going to get minute mend. You're going to get all sorts. So yeah, really nice play by there. Um, definitely the right decision. He is shipping the 13 strelets. I wonder. No, sorry, not the 13 strelets. The 19 strelets. Interesting. They are veteran. The musketeers aren't. He knows war wagons are coming. He knows he knows war wagons, skirmishers, and ulans are coming. So, and and historically, I mean, they still do actually. Not historically, they Russia have and always have uh, had a difficulty. Some nice scouting going on. Let's just see what's going on. Um, they've always had a difficulty of dealing with war wagons because if we look at Strelets, they only have fourteen range. If you look at war wagons, they have sixteen range and an insane attack. So it's very difficult to deal with war wagons um, for Russia. He's kind of going to be relying on Strelets, just a massive bit of everything, Falconets and the, the double block house. Should he be pushing in here? Kind of risky, kind of risky. Uh, I'm not sure he should be showing his hand here, but does he want to push in? It's difficult to say at this stage. I mean, the scores are quite close now. Um, I think that it might bounce back for Tabin, but... Yeah... I mean, now getting cavalry archers, which uh, is probably their best unit, you know, particularly early age three. So it looks like he's going to kind of be ditching the Ruskets. Not going to bother getting the veterancy. He doesn't actually have that many. And he's going to be going for Russia's equivalent of Skirm Goon, which is cavalry archer and Strelet. Uh, got these Falconets as well. Russia obviously get that card. Germany don't. So pretty standard stuff. Very low macro there, which is very good. Always a sign of a good player. Tabin. And here come the Bosniaks. Do you know what? I did see when his score was 15 and 15k each. I thought, I knew it was going to, it had to bounce back, right? It had to bounce back. And and that's what happens. When you take 1k gold into a mercenary shipment, it takes 1k gold off the uh, the, the score. And then it's going to bounce back straight away. And he's pushing in at the wrong time. No, this is going to be ugly. The Bosniaks are going to come and come in. The War Wagons are going to come in. The Ulons are going to come in for the flank as well. They're going to be coming from everywhere. Bye bye, Falconets. See you later. There goes your grave. And oh my god, it's such a perfect wedge by Tabin. And I said, why on earth are you pushing in? I thought I knew it was a bad idea. And the, uh, the Strelets are just going to go bye-bye. The Ruskets are just going to do absolutely nothing, really. The Cavalry Archers are going to put in some work, but it's just not going to be enough. The Bosniaks, though, surprisingly go down. That was actually uh, that was actually pretty good for Sputnik. Under the circumstances, I was actually surprised. I thought the Bosniaks, I thought some of the Bosniaks were going to survive. To be quite honest with you, but they didn't. These cavalry archers really put in some work there. If we look at their stats, I mean, three hundred fifty-eight HP. They do have melee resist as well. Um, I, it's it's kind of a it's kind of a a known thing, but no one really talks about it. That cavalry archers are kind of OP in in DE at the moment. Uh, a lot of civilizations like to go for cavalry archers. Back in the day, it was all about going dragoons. But these days, it's all about going for cavalry archers. And another push coming in. And it's just one shipment after another with Germany. And in come the nine Udons. Who needs Bosniaks? You've got another shipment of nine cav. And here they come. Deciding to siege down the blockhouse. Not sure that's the wisest move. Almost felt like a disconnect there from Tavern. Didn't really know what he wanted to do. Now he's deciding to dive in. So he, he it doesn't matter if he goes to the blockhouse or not. 
The Ulons, the veteran Ulons are just going to get in there and smash everything in their line of sight. More Cavalry Archers are coming up, but there's still some Skirmishers or Bows in the background. They're going to be the best bet against Cavalry Archers. A 620 HP Explorer coming in there just for the fun of it now. And I think we might see a GG very shortly. Although Russia is doing some really sexy raids down here. Look at this. Tabin's not realising. And that's going to be a lot of settler wagons that have just gone down. The plot thickens. The plot thickens. And ladies and gents, this is not over just yet. I dare say how many settler wagons actually went down there. Wait a minute. I don't see any other settler wagons. He must have lost all of his settler wagons. I think he just lost all of his settler wagons. But another huge tempo spike. The eight skirmishers coming in with the three Ulons. He does lose all the... Right, if Russia can hold off, they might still be in this. They might still be in this. But some more raids of his own now, Tabin. Going to be picking off a few villagers here as well. I mean, a fort would be perfect for Russia right now. If we take a quick look at Russia, he's on 39 vils. Whilst Tabin's only on 20. And I don't know how many settler wagons he's got left. Looks like it's only the one. He's only got one settler wagon. <laughs> that was an insane raid by Russia. But how's he going to deal with all this? How's he going to deal with all this? So I think Tabin knows he might be under the clock here. So Tabin is, is definitely going to want to end this within the next few minutes. Can he do it? Can he do it? He's, put, he's pumping out some skirmishers. But look at his... Look at this eco. He's terrible. Poor wet in TP, not getting any love from anyone here. Like I said, Tabin definitely would it would have been very effective for Tabin to get that because it would have impacted the war wagons, it would have impacted the Ulons, it would have impacted the Bosniaks. Imagine the Bosniaks with this big button, with the wet and big button. Absolutely game changing. Sputnik are going in for the 1k wood. Uh yeah, I mean, if you use it to spam blockhouses, I agree with you. Gonna get another two. Tabin knows exactly what's up. Tavern knows exactly what's up. He does need to get that stable up as well because he needs to be able to produce these uh, cavalry archers. How's he going to do with these skirms? Though? There's a lot of skirms. And these blockhouses, they're not upgraded. Take a quick look at Sputnikko. He's producing Shalets. He's, he's got a decent mass. 14 cavalry archers. Not bad. I mean, if he can produce enough Shalets to try and just do as much damage to this huge... Skirmish mass minimum getting popped now. It's go time, baby. Strelet's gonna get wedged in by the Ulons. Are the Cavalry Archers gonna be microing on? They're not microing. You need to Cavalry Archers need to be on the calves, but Nico. He finally realizes, but at what cost? Again, the explorers getting stuck in there. Just skirmishes at the back, just smashing everything. He's trying to get another blockhouse up. Looks like he's probably going down an artillery, but he doesn't have the macro at this moment in time. Oh, I like this Cossack. <laughs> It's only six Cossacks, though. It's kind of a terrible card, but it's it's going to be his best bet. See, the, it, it, his, Tabin's army is dwindling, and the blockhouses are putting in work. But is it going to be enough, though? He doesn't actually have that great a siege. I mean, war wagons are okay for siege, but these skirmishes aren't great. No TC fire, either. Cossacks coming in, but are they going to pounce? There's still a decent 4-5 mass of war wagons there. It's not going to be enough. And in come the A Oolong card now. Just just one shipment after one power shipment after one power shipment. It's just, it's just wave after wave with Germany. Again, just giving him that tempo back. He whittled it down, but then bang, in come them again. These Cossacks aren't veteran either, but... Is it, is it going to be able to do enough damage to these skirmishers? The problem is if he's going to try and get... Art this artillery foundry has just been completely worthless at the moment. Is he going to decide to get a falconet with that? The cavalry archers are on the Oolons, but there's just so many of them. Cossacks doing some work. Oh, there's only one blockhouse left. Oh, he's, oh don't, is he going to see these? He, he doesn't even know there's a herd there. That's very fortunate for Sputniko. I mean, where are his villagers? They're all kind of around the back. Good job these berries going to... Oh, he's scouting now. He's using that Udon to scout. 
He wants to destroy the eco of the Russia player. Again, more blockouts is coming up. He's he's inching it by a thread. He says that that's a lot of food. I mean, what's he gonna be able to do with it though? That's the problem. Oh, he's gonna see this now. He's gonna pounce on the next blockhouse. I mean, a, a good two blockhouses with TC fire would be great here. Another blockhouse going down. Tabin just going from blockhouse to blockhouse to blockhouse. And at this rate, Tabin's is going to be able to rebuild his eco back up. Spot Nico on 42 vils. Germany on 26. So, again, if he can just hold on, he'll be okay. Hold the door! More blockhouses. You know Tabin's raging right now. Just stop building the blockhouses. That one's definitely not going to get built. I don't know. I don't know. It's not looking good. And and look, uh, Tabin's... I mean, his eco is much worse, but he's still got enough to just produce another four war wagons just coming in there. And I think it's looking good for Germany. And there's the GG. Well played, Tabin. I, I was pretty tense there for a second. That raid just coming in real clutch. Real, real clutch. We'll take a quick look at the village account there before we give Tabin a sexy raid as he is streaming. Lo <laughs> Wait, we've got to look at village population. Oh, lauded, lauded. Praise to Jesus. That's a 21 villager raid. Imagine getting a 21 villager raid and still losing the game. Like, you, you're going to be sore about that. You are going to be, you're going to be very, very sore. I feel like Russia's biggest mistake was taking this fight here. Although, I guess the plus side to taking the fight here was the fact that he could get that raid on. And that was obviously distracting Tavern. But yeah, the Bosniaks getting popped, it, it was just nasty. I, I, I don't know why he just, he shouldn't have... Russia shouldn't have popped. He shouldn't have come out of his base, of his forward barracks. He should have had the protection of the two blockhouses. And Russia scale really well. Russia get that free villagers, you know, and it becomes very efficient over time. Uh, so he, he would have been looking good the longer the game went on for him. But, uh, yeah, just just itched. It had, to, had to itch that itch and had to push forward with the two Falcon Nets. Felt like it was go time. But, yeah, very good game. Very good going by both. Just take a quick look at all resources gathered. Yeah, looking good for Sputniko. This is the big raid point. Kept it quite close, though, considering. Definitely a, a decent age of time as well. Yeah, very nice semi-FF build by Russia. Excellent. Well, that's GG.